We haven't been on DDR4 for too long. I mean, it was only the Skylake days that it became absolutely necessary, and even then it was wishy-washy. You could find some motherboards that supported DDR3 with Skylake. But now is the time that we need to look towards the future, my friends. The years of DDR4 are basically over because it is time for DDR5. Yes, my friends, we have some great information about DDR5 RAM, which should hopefully uh, you know, just give us some solace in this terrible drought of G the RAM prices and GPU prices. It all sucks. Anyways, this video particularly is brought to you by our Twitch channel. Yes, I stream over on Twitch now. Twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple is where you can find all of our live streams over there. We're still working on what the type of schedule is going to look like, especially while I'm here in the United States. But my friends, I can guarantee you once I get back to South Africa, and especially once we go to Computex in Taiwan, I'm going to be live streaming up a storm. So you want to head on over there get following. You could also subscribe if you have Twitch Prime uh, because you get that for free with Amazon Prime. So you can definitely follow me over there, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple as Tank messages me about information that's going on. Anyways, let's dive into the meat of the video. So this article today is coming from Cadence. It says DDR5 IP test chips operate with Micron prototype DRAM at 4400 mega transfers per second. Now my friends, just want to let you know on some little information there that mega transfers in terms of RAM also equals megahertz. So if you have 4,400 mega transfers, you have 4,400 megahertz. Now to give you some perspective, some of the best DDR4 consumer RAM that you can find on the market right now is like basically 4133 mega transfers per second. So this test is something that we haven't seen. It's going to be absolutely phenomenally fast. However, there's some information that I'm just like, okay, that's, I wouldn't agree with that anyways. Obviously, they're smarter than I am. I'm just taking it with, with my perspective on the consumer realm. So it says, Cadence has created a test chip containing next generation memory interface IP based on the discussions of what is likely to be in DDR5. And Micron has produced prototype DRAM chips. The test chip was fabricated on TSMC's seven nanometer process, which is a process we have been talking a lot about with AMD and Intel. Intel's on 10 nanometers. Anyways, we're talking a lot about seven nanometers lately. It contains both the controller and PHY, the two chips working together, successfully achieving 4,400 megatransfers per second. Again, as I mentioned, 4,400 megahertz, 37.5 faster than the fastest commercially available DDR4 memory. And as far as we can tell, this is the first demonstration of DDR5 IP working with memory chips. And now when it says it's 37.5% faster, what they're really referring to is that most of the memory that you see that is super blazingly fast, that might even be 4,133, that's overclock. That's not actually coming out of the factory like that. They have been binned, they have been tested, and they have been produced to come out as a package deal saying we can get 4400 megahertz, which is technically true, but that's not what the chip is actually running at. That's what it's overclocked to run at. So looking more at the information, it says he pointed out that DDR5 is mostly a capacity solution more than performance. As die get bigger, they get slower due to all sorts of laws of physics, which I absolutely agree with and I understand that. The thing I don't agree with is 4400 megahertz per second doesn't seem like it's not about performance. So one of the reasons they talk about why it's not for performance, obviously the speed of 4400 megahertz is blazingly fast, but the cast latency is 42 with this test. Now, cast latency on DDR4 is something like 14 to 16 on really great memory. So if you have 3200 megahertz, you can get 14 cast latency, which as we've gone up the DDR, I guess, scale of ladders of iterations, we've reduced, we've increased our latency because as the speed gets higher, it's harder to keep that latency. It's just a give and take that you have to do. So. We had lower latencies on DDR3. You could get it down to eight, even lower in some instances. Eight to 12 was not unheard of in many cases, but now we're getting to the point where 42 obviously is really high. I wouldn't expect this in the consumer chip because this is just the first iteration of DDR5 actually happening, but we could potentially see something that would be higher, probably closer to 20 than, uh, than to 10. As, as we've seen from DDR4. So they're talking about how it's more about capacity, saying that there are 16 gigabit dies that they wanna make easier and to vertically stack them easier. And the speed of the cores I changed is unchanged, but the IO is higher speed. So 16 gigabit dies, that means two gig 
gigabyte dies because one bit is equal to eight, or one byte is equal to eight bits. So 16 gigabit is equal to two gigabytes. Anyways, so that, that's basically what we're looking at. So higher density RAM, potentially with faster mega transfers per second, but then slower latency. It's a give and it's a take, but hopefully we could end up seeing 64, maybe potentially 128 gig dims uh, on, on consumer level stuff. Not the 128 wouldn't be consumer level. That would be something that would be absolutely like ECC memory for the highest of high end servers and costing like $40,000 per stick. I'm just spitballing here. I don't, I can't tell you what it would actually cost. So the article finishes off saying that once again, with the caveat that the standard is not final, here's what it looks like DDR5 will specify. Supply voltage will drop from 1.2 volts for DDR4 to 1.1 volts for DDR5. So less power needed to do it, which also means lower temperatures. That data rates will run up to 6.4 gigabits per second eventually, 4.4 gigabits per second initially. And then on die termination, pulled up VDDQ, will be available for address buses, but not just data buses. So Cadence says the DDR5 is not standard and it has not been finalized by JEDC, but is expected to complete sometime this summer, which would be the standard. So obviously we could see DDR5 take place sometime in the future, maybe with Zen 2, we could see it on the next generation of Ryzen. If not, then we could see it with the following generation, maybe Whiskey Lake, probably not. Zen 3 could be a time that we could see it. Obviously this is not something that uh, we have a ton of of finalized information about when it's coming out. We're just getting some information on the tests that are taking place. This is not rumor, the tests that are taking place, the speculation that's happening is on the development and time frame of when this will be completed and when you and I can expect to get our hands on it. But I wanna know, are you excited for DDR5 or do you just not care? Memory standards not really up your alley of things that you find that rustle your jimmies or do they rustle your jimmies in the exact opposite way of getting you really hot and bothered for everything that might be coming down the pipeline with brand new technology. Anyways, that's gonna be good there. Be sure to smash the like button, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I will again encourage you to check out our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. Go on over there, give me a follow, maybe give me a subscribe if it's free for you, if you have Amazon Prime that you haven't do dedicated to another Twitch streamer. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Yes, get subscribed here on YouTube because it's free, unlike on Twitch where it's not. Anyway, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.